Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Australian Market Preview for the last day of November. My name is Carl Kaplingua. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets. It is a pleasure to be with you on what really should be a record-setting November. We'll talk about that and a whole lot more after we talk about the Think Markets difference, which is substantial $8 flat rate trades, your own holder identification number, and unlimited phone support, three fantastic reasons why you should choose us before your next ASX share trade. The agenda for this morning to, is to have a look at some of those uh, COVID cases, how they're tracking along. Uh, we'll have a look at some of the key market movements from Friday and some charts, including local charts as well. We'll have a look at some of those companies going ex-dividend. Couldn't find any uh, early broker moves this Monday morning, nor was there any major economic data out on a Friday because of the US Thanksgiving holiday. But we will look ahead to the weekly calendar. Okay, COVID cases. This is over the weekend. Uh, still a devastating number of cases in Europe and the US. But if there is a positive, it is that those curves are coming down and for the US finally that it's starting to show signs of backing away. Fingers crossed that continues, but I keep saying it, that could well be the chink in the armour for this, uh, this current bull phase of equity markets. Having a look at Friday's trading on the ASX 200, we are in a bull phase, but we're having a little bit of a pullback, top to bottom, just over 1.6%, 1.7% from that Wednesday high. So nothing, I think, at this stage to be concerned about because we're up about 13.5-odd percent for November. As I said, it's going to be our best November since 1988. So um, you know, after that stock market crash in 87 and markets um, sort of recovering are there. So uh, over 30 years since we had a November this good, I should say really uh, any month, any month as good as the one we're having. So it puts into perspective just how bullish markets have become in the very short term. Small pullbacks, as I said, gold having a bounce, but it got hit again on Friday. So I would expect that to back out this morning. Um, property was the other sector that had a small gain, but energy uh, pulling back a little bit. It's just a pullback because as we'll see in a second, energy prices were up again on Friday. Uh, in Asia, some you know, solid gains really in Japan and the Hang Seng, but I do note the Shanghai Composite, and it looks fantastic. This chart looks really amazing. If you want to get involved in it, I've got a few ETFs you might want to look at. So IZZ is one of them. Asia, A-S-I-A, is another one. And Vanguard Emerging Markets ETF. So just to repeat that, IZZ, that is the iShares Large Cap Asia China ETF, and Asia, so ASIA is the ticket code there. It's the Asian Tech Tigers ETFs 3 to keep an eye on on that uh, very strong-looking Shanghai Composite Index. In the US, we had some small gains on the Dow and the S&P 500, but great to see a little bit of a risk-on move there in the NASDAQ, up nearly 1%. Europe was uh, slightly higher. Also very risk-on here for commodities prices, aluminium, uh, copper, nickel, tin, all getting about a, a 1% gain. Uh, I note zinc. Uh, doing a bit better there, 1.6%, and lead up nearly 3%. Iron ores are down slightly in Shanghai trading at the moment, but was up a little bit in US dollar trading. Precious metals generally lower there. Silver down 3.3% and gold down 1%. That chart is really struggling at the moment. Okay, looking at uh, energy continues its rally highest levels since the beginning of the pandemic. The Australian dollar also getting a little bit of a bump, up 0.3% as the US dollar continues to weaken. It closed at its lowest level since the start of the pandemic as well. Having a look at bonds, bond yields coming down slightly, uh, which helps tech stocks, by the way. They tend to be quite uh, long-term yield sensitive. Having a look at the S&P 500 in the US, it is a very, very solid technical picture at the moment with very clear short-term and long-term uptrends. We're moving to the top of a little bit of a consolidation phase here between 36.46 and 35.11 down the bottom. We are close to breaking through the top of that range. The NASDAQ's already done it. I can't see any reason why the S&P 500 shouldn't uh, do that this week. Having a look at the NASDAQ Composite, as we suggested, it has broken and closed at new all-time highs. I've changed the color of these uh, dash lines here, they were red, indicating potential resistance, potential supply in the market. I've now changed them to light green, which indicates potential support, potential demand 
in the market. We know that once um, old points of supply, old points of resistance are broken, they tend to act as points of support or demand going forward. Looking very constructive, um, you know, the break through the top of that consolidation zone starts to get you to think about targets and you can, you can measure them off. Let me show you. So if we say that uh, this is our ascending triangle pattern through here, okay, you can measure the height of the triangle and project that obviously up. Um, and that's a substantial projection, isn't it? About 2,000 points um, would, would take us to 14,000. Uh, the period of time you're looking at that to occur is, is over a few months. Um, there are some shorter term ones you can do through here as well, but I'll leave that up to you. Bottom line is short term uptrend well established, long term uptrend well established. Nice pattern breakout would have to lead you to be quite bullish on the NASDAQ. Having a look a little closer to home on the ASX 200, these are the futures, our share price index, which traded. Friday night, so giving you an indication of how we responded to that up session in the USA. And here I like to look at the shape of the chart. So um, bottom left, top right is always a nice tick. And are we closing near the highs or the lows of the session? And we've closed very close to the highs. So that's a, another tick there. We're indicating about a 0.8% of a gain on the ASX 200 today, which would take us somewhere up here, um, confirm this level as a new trough. Uh, which is just another sort of um, little higher peak, higher trough move in this, as I said, fantastic November we're having. In terms of upside targets, there is a little pressure point here, okay, coming in around about 6,900, 6,897 to be exact. Uh, and if we can then get through that, we could be heading back to those all-time highs from February at 71.97. I can't see anything in the chart at this point in time with very strong short-term moving averages and the long-term trend about to turn up, uh, that would suggest that you, you shouldn't continue to play the long side for the ASX 200. Okay, dividends coming out. Uh, we have, uh, ignore that because I would have put this together probably on Friday. That's why it says three days to dividend. This is the column you want to focus on here. Um, these are the dividends coming out today. And then as you can see, the ones coming out tomorrow. And so on, I will let you pause the screen and check those out. But let's keep moving. Uh, the calendar for this week, pretty big week actually for the Australian market. We will have our RBA decision on Tuesday. That is going to be a big one. And then we'll have um, Philip Lowe speaking about that decision on Wednesday and Australian GDP also coming out. Retail sales towards the end of the week will be closely monitored as well. Um, that's just showing the ones for today, isn't it? So uh, not a whole lot coming out today, to be fair. Uh, let me click on the button so we can see the ones for today on the uh, world calendar. Uh, we do have some OPEC meetings, Chicago PMI pending home sales tonight. But looking towards the end of the week, we do have a testimony in front of a um, Senate banking committee, committee for a chairman Fed Chairman Jerome Powell and the big ones coming out here, the non-farm payroll. So widely considered to be the biggest of any data release on a monthly basis. That'll be on Friday night, our time. Okay, that's it for me this morning. You can catch all of our other updates as they appear in the market news section on the website today. And for the rest of the week, you can follow me or the Think Markets handle there on Twitter. On Wednesday, we'll have an Ask the Experts session. So uh, make sure you find the webinars tab on the website and register for that one. You can ask me about any of the stocks you're interested in, happy to do a technical or a fundamental on those. And then on the 9th of December, we'll have the next in our Think Learning series on how to value a stock. Okay, the disclaimer, as always, says that everything we've talked about this morning is general advice. We do have some products that could see you lose more than your deposits. So as a regulated Australian broker, we need to tell you to do your research, read these disclaimers, give us a call or uh, consult the website for further details. Okay, it's been a pleasure to be with you this morning. I'll catch you very soon, no doubt. All the best for your trading until we catch up again. Bye-bye for now.